Hi all, me again. So, uh, tonight's video, something different for a change. Back to wagons, um, no miners taught this time, but I hope you found that one informative. Um, tonight, um, I'm covering brake racks. Now, if you follow my Facebook page, there's been some developments on me drawing up a brake rack uh, for the RCH wagon. Um, I've had a bit of a chat with someone about doing them as a lost wax casting because the top part, the way it was shaped, um, it was a casting and everything like that, on full size that is, not on miniature. Um, so I kind of looked down the roots of uh, lost, wax, lost wax casting them. Um, and again, it comes down to you guys as a consumer when it comes to costings and everything like that because if they're not a big seller, I don't order that many and if I don't order that many it costs more money so it's kind of bit it can be all looked at as a bit of a pointless exercise laser cutting them and fabricating them is the quickest way and the cheapest way um, and cheaper than that um, would be to go down the routes how I'm doing it at the minute and that's fabricating them so you start off with some quarter by sixteenth steel. You could probably do it out a bit thinner, um, but I do it out sixteenth because one quarter by sixteenth is available um, from loads of different model engineering suppliers. Um, I haven't got to get anything guillotined up or laser cut or anything at the minute, but I am going to go down the route of having one laser cut because they only really need to be a millimetre thick, not 1.6 as this would turn out to be. So, they don't, because they're not really doing a great deal apart from you pinning the brakes down. Now you'll notice that's a the back part of it, with a hole in it. That's the front part, and it's got two bends in it. Okay, now you'll notice there isn't any holes for the actual pin when you pin the brakes down. And if you watch old shunting videos, you'll see them with a long metal pole. Uh, the wagon to come along and they jam the pole in and push the brake lever down and slap the pin in um, So what it should look like and that is one I made earlier. Well, I didn't actually um, These are laser cut ones And they're in five inch for five inch gauge wagon and these are done by uh, my mate Chris over at the Yorkshire wagon wagon company so that's a laser cut part and then it's all bent up to how it needs to be and then there's the back plate to it there look see this part's been it's tabbed and silver soldered together at the top there so when they marry up like so you have a brake rack now you see this little tab there that's for the chain to go on and the pins where the pins fit in and then the pins obviously go through the holes there this leg that's here that bolts to your W iron okay now you'll notice mine hasn't got that yet it hasn't got a leg and that's because I'm doing it well like the full-size drawing really and I'm gonna have another piece off that that will be have a double bend in it and attach to the W iron not all wagons had that lower leg on so check your drawing that you or the the prototype that you're copying on whether you should have that on or not now what I'm going to do with this I'm going to bolt the bottom bit together there which will give me the gap okay and then I've got the top piece here bent in the L shape that's going to bolt in there like so and give me the shape that I need yeah the silver solder joints going to be there and then what I do then from there on in it's a bit cronky wonky donkey what I do from there is I jam a piece of wood the right distance in there and I mark the face and put all the holes in you'll also notice when mine hasn't got that tab for the pin chain and there's two reasons one I haven't cut it to silver solder it on yet and the other one is I was in two minds whether to do it as per my full size drawing or whether to do it how I've done with my other with some Midland wagons which is there's a little hoop at the top and the chain was hung from that hoop down the face 
So, and I was like, oh, what shall I do? But as I'm copying an RCH wagon, I'm gonna do it properly and put the little tab halfway down. So it'll look like that. Um, I've drawn these up um, ready to send off for, for laser cutting out. The bit that bothers me at the minute is making sure I've got my right distances for that bend, that bend, that bend and that bend because once you've got the holes in it and you go to bend all that up if i haven't got the strip of material the right length when you go to bend it all and bolt it all together the holes might not line up and then throw it in the bin so the, they're drilled um 6ba clearance like so and i'll whack a bolt nut on there but whack that nut, nut on the back of there and what that'll do on here, it will hold it in the right position for me to get the front one on, the top one there in the right position. That one will be bolted in there. And because that one's bolted in there, it will keep it the right distance apart for me to run the solder in it, which I'm going to do that video in a second. So I'm going to cut away now, bolt all this together, flux it all up, drop it on me. Uh, little makeshift hearth here um, silver solder that joint and hopefully film it at the same time so you can see the process of what's going on and then uh, yeah fingers crossed we're gonna be all right I say fingers crossed they always work out because if they don't I don't publish them on the old YouTube do I so uh, yeah so stay tuned and we'll get this cracking all right Okay, so I hope you can see this. There's the flux joint there. Um, and I'm about to fire up the old silver soldering. Now what I'm doing, I'm hoping it doesn't affect this too much. I'm just turning off um, artificial light in the workshop to make it a bit darker. <clears throat> and the reason for that is I wanna see what that metal's doing in color. Because that's how I do silver soldering. Somehow, I've run out of gas, but never mind, we'll uh, reconvene this in a sec, just bear me a second. Okay, so we're back in the zone again, new bottle of gas. So we're heating up that joint there, until we get it glowing. You can see the flux burning off, or the, the water in the flux burning off. Okay. And what I'm doing, I'm going to watch the metal, not the flux this time. I'm doing this. See that top piece has gone starting to glow already. It's this bottom one I want to go with it. And the uh, flux has now gone to like a water. Touch it. Job done. Yes, I've gone a little bit excessive with the silver solder there, but I don't care. It's better to rub too much on it and clean it off again than not have enough. And that's it done so now what we'll do we'll get the uh, acid and just drop that in I'll let it cool first I don't like grabbing hold of it when it's red up with the pliers or whatever to drop it in the acid so we'll let it go a little bit cooler first this is my small parts acid bath which is basically a Tupperware tub with some water and acid mixed together in it goes okay okay so that's that process done okay so we've done that bit um, what I've just done I've just taken it out of the actual acid citric acid buy that in crystals from EKP and other Reeves and all them lot um, you know they all do a, a, a citric acid crystals you mix it with water and uh, I'll leave mine just in a little Tupperware tub for little little parts because it's kind of easier to deal with than doing a big bath of it somewhere that will eventually evaporate unless you keep it topped up with water but if you've got a little tub of it 
it's all you're going to really need to be honest um the flux because before someone asked me via messenger or whatever it's even still got the old label on it ekp supplies easy flow flux powder um on there i don't know if you can see that just on there um i've had it donkey's ears i think it was my dad's before mine um you know so when he passed away and i took his workshop on there we are still got that old stuff still going you don't really use a lot of it i have a little jar there with a load pre-mix in it and if that evaporates because the jar lid's not very good anymore if it evaporates pardon the uh the way i i'm going to describe this now but i'll put a little bit of spit in it um to turn it back into a liquid so top plate unbolted bottom bit still soldered together job done so now what i'm going to do is i'll just tickle up this joint here that i've silver soldered if you see that i'll just tickle that up with a file make it all nice and neat again then i'll mark out that face for all the pinholes for the brake pin the rack pin to go through and then i'll solder on the little tab there same process as before but i'll put it face down with the thing and then just touch it in um, what i use to solder 0 0.75 i think this is easy flow wire um i buy this on ebay for like three three foot lengths um, I go through that quite a bit. I've got some rods that I think I've done in another video um, But they're 1.5 for something like this Joint you don't need 1.5 wire Just to put a dab on it. Yes, I did go a little bit excessive with the with the thing on there so that In a nutshell is how you do a brake rack So that will bolt through there As you saw it bolted together. That'll be in the top bit and that's your rack and that bolts onto the frames like so you can see that it'll bolt on the frames like so i've already pre-drilled the the sole bars for this to go on so that'll bolt on like so and then the brake lever brake lever which i've just had cut um edit model engineers laser he's a brilliant bloke um he's done me some new brake levers I drew these up from the works drawing. It's got the angle there. You can see the angle in it. Got the angle right, the depth there right. I've put a hole in it so that, because what I do is I back these with a little stub, because this is single acting brake on each side. That will obviously go through like so. You'll be able to pin the brakes on or lift it and rack it up like so. All working. Um, yeah, so I drew all that up from the works drawer and sent it off to Ed. He did me a quote and Bob's your uncle. Ten days later, if that. Yeah, I don't think even even it was that long. Um, five or six days later, parts are on my uh, on my doorstep. Can't fault them guys. Model engineers laser. So if you need model, if you need stuff, um, quirky parts that you don't. Um, you can't find anywhere uh, like I've had a lot of stuff recently where I've Yes, I could fabricate it like these um, But if I can get it laser cut it saves a lot of drilling and messing and fart arsing about <clears throat> At the end of the day building one of these wagons time is money and it is a, a Hobby business. It's not my full-time job. I would like it to be my full-time job. Don't get me wrong. I'd like to keep creating videos for people and building wagons for people um, and doing it full time but there's not enough of you chaps out there building these little bad boys for it to turn into a full time job so we have to do it in our spare time <clears throat> and that is getting hard, harder and harder to find. As a lot of model engineers will know even when you retire you don't seem to have any spare time not that i'm retiring yet i'm far from it but there we go thank you for watching um we'll see you on the next video um keep posted on that one i'll show share some pictures um as it's all finished and the rack is on the wagon that i'm doing um and i'll do the the 
brake action and how the brakes are pinned on. Um, and if I can find a suitable video, I might share, share a video of some wagons of the good old days of steam being shunted and brakes pinned on and stuff. I love watching old videos like that. Brings back some right nostalgia. Not that I was around back in those days. I wish I was. Um, yeah, so thank you ever so much for watching. Um, hope to see you at a show or an event um, soon. If not, if you have got any messages, send me a message. Um, or any comments just put a put a comment on there uh, if you've got something that you you know oh I'm building one of these and I'm kind of stuck on this I get a, quite a few questions of what bolt sizes you use what do you do for this just fire a message across and I'll answer it as best I can um, even if it isn't wagon related if I don't know myself I will know someone who does know and if they don't know, we will find someone between us to find someone that does know. That's the whole point, sharing knowledge. Sharing knowledge. If there isn't people like me and others that share knowledge, our hobby would die very, very quickly. And we don't want that. So thanks for watching. See you again next time.